Hi, you're going to watch me watch TED 2. DVD menu is really cute. It has Mark Wahlberg plays John and little teddy bear Ted drinking beer out of cans and paper bags on a park bench. Oh, so cute. Okay, let's play. Play theatrical version or unrated version? I think unrated means they cut less shit out, so let's go for that. Bunch of warnings, don't steal this. I got it from the library. It was in the public library. <laughs> go figure. I'm gonna go into full screen. This film has been modified from its original version to include material, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so this is like the long version with the bad jokes that they didn't cut out. So I'm excited. I don't think I've seen this version. We have the Universal logo, which is the planet with the text Universal floating over it. And there's some orchestral overture music coming up. All of Seth MacFarlane's work is incredibly well scored. And Patrick Stewart is narrating the voiceover. Oh, and Ted's getting married to his girlfriend. There's a cool shot that goes through a rose window in a church. <gasps> and Tammy and Ted are getting married and she's got like a pink wedding gown. He's got a little tuxedo on and it's like Flash Gordon. And he says fucking A right. He says fucking his wedding vows. That's adorable. And they get married because he's technically a human being, even though he's a bear. And Mark Wahlberg is there. Oh, his name is John. I'm going to keep calling him Mark though by accident. Uh, He's the best man, and they go. <laughs> I love these movies because it's Seth, uh, motion capture. They're walking out now, and it's like he, he is the teddy bear. He's, like, acting out all the scenes, and they just, like, put a teddy bear in there, and I think that's just genius. I love it. And there's, like, a wedding reception. People are dancing, like, jazzy sort of music, of course, and Flash Gordon has two chicks he's dancing with. And there's a bunch of tables crowded, and band takes a break. Pass it over to DJ Nightshade, some dude who introduces Ted and Tammy, the newlyweds. Wow, that dress is... Uh, Pretty awesome. <laughs> and she's so happy. Aw. And he loves her too. He says, I'm going to go 50 shades of bear on you. <laughs> and she gets two beers for them. They're drinking beer out of bottles at their wedding. And uh, Patrick Warburton, who is a gay guy in this movie, and that's like a, I think he's a, um, what do you call it? Not a warlock. <laughs> he's on Star Trek. The guy with the foreheads. You know what I mean. <laughs> oh, and they're getting married. And then they act like straight guys. This is kind of like a precursor to the Mocklins on the Orville, maybe. Oh, and Ted throws a beer bottle at the DJ. And he, oh, because he would play the electric slide, and he's like, "Fuck no, that that requires an assault from a, a cartoon bear." And oh, John is sitting there; he's all sad because he uh, he got divorced, and they're watching some sort of porn at the bachelor party, and it's bears. Of course it's bears. Why wouldn't it be actual bears like a nature documentary? 
and they're laughing. Like it's like the first episode of Family Guy. Except they actually got porn instead of the Statue of Liberty. But it's like bears. <laughs> oh. And he said because Lori played Ben Mila Kunis, left him. It's been six months. I, I think it would take longer to get longer than six months to get over her personally, so leave him alone. Oh, and he's like, Hey, it's a potty, you know. <laughs> Tammy Lynn's asshole brother in the wheelchair is like, hey, if you don't dance with me, you're a monster. And then he trips somebody. Oh, and Flash Gordon's like, hey, let's go do some coke. And he's like, uh, no, Tammy would kill me. He's like, I bet you can't even spot the guy I just did a line with. And there's a guy jumping rope in the corner. And then he punches somebody and jumps out of the window. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I'm going to pass. Good. Good to know that the bear has some self-control. Oh, and he gets up on stage. Oh, they're gonna, are they going to sing something? Oh, this is cute. Oh, this is adorable. Thunder Buddy, like, big band <laughs> Oh, this is adorable. <laughs> oh, and then they do a stage dive. Oh. And then, like, the actual band starts again. <laughs> That's really cute. And Tammy's dancing with him because she loves him so much. He's just a little teddy bear. Flash Gordon knows his two girls, and the gay guys are slow dancing. And Ted says it's the best day of his life, and then it goes into, like, this Busby Berkeley intro with, like, you know, chorus girls on, like, a big wedding cake and stuff like that. It's, like, extremely well choreographed and orchestrated and everything just over the credits. And it's goddamn flawless cinema for Ted, too. There's the title. It's perfect. And he slides down, like, the stairs. And, like, Ted's doing everything that the dancers are doing. And then it's, like, all centered around him. It's this little teddy bear amongst this whole, like, chorus line. And uh, it's... Adorable, and it's so well choreographed. <laughs> and he slides down a piano. And you got to look up Busby Berkeley. This is exactly what this is like, you know, parodying sort of. It's these, uh, you know, like each dancer gets a close-up sort of cinematography. And, uh, you know, like the Rockettes sort of chorus girls. And... Ted's doing all these acrobatic things that I, I doubt that this is actually Seth doing all these stunts here. I'm just saying, like, it kind of seems like they animated this in later. <laughs> they can make a lot of things happen. You have no idea. <laughs> it's it's mind-boggling. But it, the man knows how to make, like, a good production that's so well done. And there's, like, even more dancing going on here. It's so perfect. It's like classic cinema. All these like dancers with these swirling skirts and guys in tuxedos like flipping them in the air and stuff. Is this like just this credit sequence or is Ted like fantasizing this? Like what is going on here? Does it matter? Not really. I'm enjoying the hell out of it, though, and I hope you are, too. If you're watching this or if you're just watching me watching the movie, either way, you should really watch it. It's fun. It's, a, it's an entertaining piece of art that people don't take seriously enough, like most of Seth's work. Like a lot of mine, too. I guess I kind of relate. 
and it's over and there's like a big like triangle formation and it's so like perfect centered like a Kubrick movie and it says one year later and it's panning in on an apartment and Ted is there in a white white theater and they're uh, arguing over bills and drinking while she's making a mistake and she's like, I need clothes for work. And he's like, it's, you're a cashier. And she's like, oh, you're buying weed. You should talk. And I like the uh, the cinematography in this. It's very shaky as it goes between them arguing. It kind of feels like you're like caught in the middle. I mean, what newlyweds don't have arguments like this, really? Does it have to do with the fact that he's a teddy bear or what? <laughs> she says she's the face of the business. Oh, and she throws the fact that the, her ex-boyfriend has a... Boston horror has seen Italian penis. And then she throws something at him. And then he throws some stuff, too, and flips a table. How does a teddy bear have, a, have the strength to flip a table? But, you know, suspend your disbelief. And then, like, he starts yelling at his downstairs neighbor, like, through the window, like they're both leaning out the window and arguing. <laughs> and then somebody else from another window starts yelling at both of them. <laughs> it's like there was a very tense scene is now broken up by all of these people yelling in different directions. And then they they yell at each other, and, and then uh, now they're friends because that other lady was yelling at them. <laughs> Oh, and uh, now Mark, and, uh, John, and, and Ted are at a bar, and they're, like, talking about Ted's marriage suck, being, marriage counseling sucks, and it, <laughs> he says, look, you're two clicks away from black talk, black cocks at all times. He says, did you mean black cocks? <laughs> He's afraid of his marriage collapsing. And they're closing soon. <gasps> oh, she's on the Orville now. Oh. And she's given her number to Mark Wahlberg because, yeah. <laughs> and she doesn't have the weird forehead thing in this one. And then Ted's like, She's like, you, 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 she wants to fuck you. And he's like, no, I'm not into her. And he's like, you've been saying that for a year and a half. You've got to get back in the game. And he's like, sorry, I wasted six years of my life with the wrong woman. I don't want to make the same mistake. Ted was like, oh, you just got to bang her and pee on her a little. you got to find new ways to surprise your lover. Okay. Like, sorry, Allison, I tried. He wants a... <laughs> Here's a picture of Ted in the bar in, like, a 90s attire with, like, a 90s haircut and a 90s shirt. <sighs> ah, Jay Leno <laughs> was trying to have sex in the bathroom and he comes out. <laughs> Sorry, you got to be watching this movie to understand what's going on. This may not be funny. And then somebody puts... Oh, it's Liam Neeson has a box of trick cereal. And he has some questions and he's very intense about it. So he's asking Ted, the cashier. He wants to know if the tricks are exclusively for children. <laughs> and Ted's like, well, it just says tricks for kids in the commercial. This is a very intense scene with an like an Oscar winning actor, which is so hilarious because it's so 
serious for no reason. He's talking about trick cereal to a teddy bear cashier. It's totally absurd. He's like, you're going to be okay. He said, I won't be followed. And he's like, that's not in our budget here. Like, we can't make sure you're not followed. <laughs> and Liam Neeson says, you do I won't forget what you've done for me. And Ted says, I preferred that you do. Jesus Christ. And Tammy's there, and she looks angry at Ted still. And then Ted's black coworker lady so he's like, you still not talking? He's like, I don't know how to fix this. How do you take a broken marriage and make it work again? And the black lady says, have a baby. What? They have a baby keeping him together. <laughs> I'm not saying it. <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> and then Ted goes into the back room and Tammy's putting some prices on some cans like she's angry. And she says, go away. He's like, will you just listen to me? And she's like, why? So you can give me shit about your clothes, but look at her ass. There was like a shot of her ass that was so perfect. Why would you complain about those clothes? And Ted's like, I love you. And I don't want to fight like we've been doing. And she's like, something's got to change. She can't do this no more. It's too much. Ted says he wants to have a baby. <gasps> And Tammy says, you do? A baby? Like, really? Oh, they... Oof. She thinks... He thinks that uh, if they t get a kid to love, they'll teach each other how to love again. She's like, she would kick so much ass at mom in. And then there's another shot of her ass. I understand why. Her ass looks great in that shot. And they're like, let's make a baby, but he's a daddy bear, so stuff's got to happen. Oh, and the manager of the store, who really sucks at being the manager, goes in the back where Ted and Tammy are fucking. <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> he's like, let me... <laughs> then Percy's go to charity. <laughs> Uh, I, <laughs> I fucked there with the pack of freedom and I put it on the shelf and a senior citizen bought it. <laughs> he says I'm naming the store after you. Something's working. Oh, and they're hitting a bong. <laughs> <laughs> and they're watching Law and Order. And they have, like, <laughs> there's lyrics to the <this> show. <laughs> We're a bunch of assholes. It's like a conversation, a hallway with a conversation. And they're doing, like, <laughs> you don't know them. They're watching you while we're high. <laughs> and he Ted says, him. Ted tells John he's going to have a baby. And he's like, oh, yeah, congratulations. But how are you guys going <laughs> to? He's like, we got to find a sperm donor. What do you think Sam Jones would say? You want Sam Flash Gordon to bother your child? Oh, your baby would be a superhero. Oh, yeah, he's going to email him about this.
can never get a signal. Can I use your laptop? Uh-oh. What's that gonna have? It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> There's so much porn! <laughs> clockwise rib job, counterclockwise rib job. You sick bastard. Chicks with dicks. Oh, and then John starts crying and saying, I need help. There's only guys with tits. That's a little transphobic. He's like, you gotta get back out there and meet somebody because you're... <laughs> Five and a lot of control. Oh, and he's like, next chick you meet, you're getting back in the game. So let's get rid of this. He takes his laptop. He's like, we gotta smash your laptop with a hammer. And they take sledgehammers and smash his laptop. And there's something so cathartic about watching that. He's like, we gotta bury it in the harbor. And they put on little scuba suits. He has a little teddy bear scuba suit, and they go and Bury the computer. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> so over the top, right? <laughs> they need a sperm donor, and he talks to Flash Gordon. And he's like, no can do. Why not? Did a lot of blow in the 80s. Sperm count's a little low. He says one. <laughs> little Bella's having a I am legend in his nutsack. He needs it for protein if he ever gets lost at sea. Uh, sister, sister, marathon, and it's going to watch itself. It's like, oh, that son of a bitch. <laughs> I watched this piece of shit movie a hundred times. <laughs> he throws a rock and the car alarm goes off. <laughs> you can just do things in movies that you can do in cartoons and get away with it if it's a comedy. Okay, so they're sneaking in somebody's house and jerking him off. Who was it? Oh, so they're in a, in a van that says air conditioning repair, cool beans air conditioning repair, and he's in a coveralls and a hat with a clipboard trying to be a repairman. Oh, Tom Brady. Then Ted's in the van watching out. He says, oh, I'm supposed to go and check out the air conditioning. <laughs> He's like, you're not a cheetah. I, hope, I think your balls are perfect. I don't understand football, so I don't get that. And he pulls a wire out of his air conditioning so it doesn't work. Okay, this is an elaborate plan. It says 89 degrees in Tom Brady's house. He's like, ah, oh, damn it. Oh, so he opens a window and there's like a convenient ledge by his pool that they can climb up and they like sneak across the yard with a ladder. <laughs> And they go into Tom Brady's bedroom through his open window, and Ted is dressed like Paddington Bear. He doesn't want to get any jizz on him. <laughs> Gonna go in your wife's vagina, though. And he says a bunch of football stuff that makes it <laughs> I give my hand job into this red solo cup. 
He's like, no, you've got to be you. He really wants Mark Wahlberg to jerk off Tom Brady. There's this whole conversation. And Ted's like, you're an adult with a poster of this guy in this room, and you're telling him you don't want this? <laughs> He's going to love it. Go. And there's like a light underneath the blanket where his dick is when they lift up the blanket. And then he wakes up because what the fuck were they thinking? Raping Tom Brady for his sperm? <laughs> and then he pushes Mark out the window and he lands on some lawn furniture. And then he <laughs> throws Ted right at him. He's like, oh, perfect spiral. Does Ted have bones? Like, can he get hurt if you throw him really hard? So many questions. It's like, what the hell do we do now? John says, why didn't you just come to me? Because he's his best friend and why not? He's like, you were the first person I wanted to go to. But you've been so bummed over your divorce. I didn't want to put you in an awkward position. And I saw you with your laptop. I didn't think you had any left. It's like, you'd do that for me? He says, you're my best friend. I'd do anything for you. Aww. It just broke into Tom Brady's house and tried to jerk him off. <sighs> Weird. <laughs> Sunday buddies for life. Let's get out of here before the cops show up. What's a 317? Somebody's trying to steal John Brady's jizz again. <laughs> Welcome to Boston, kid. <laughs> they have a number for that. <laughs> uh, you'd think Tom Brady would just sweat and not open the window. He's like getting ready. Mark's like <laughs> He's like, what do you think you're at a red lobster? So what do you think you're doing? You haven't smoked pot for two whole days. I don't want something to feed with a pitchfork when he's 16. <laughs> and there's like a super hot nurse in a super hot nurse's outfit, which are never worn by any nurses anywhere except movies made by men. My mom's a nurse. She wears scrubs like a doctor or a lab coat. And the nurse at the sperm clinic is super hot, and she's got like perfect hair and makeup and the, like the white outfit and everything. And John's like, I don't talk to pretty women that often. I think Mark Wahlberg's an awkward guy. Oh, you want to go get a drink as he's holding up the sperm cup? I don't mean this. <laughs> She's like, I have a boyfriend. I just, just dress this hot at work for me, dude. Hashtag feminism. He's like, do you have a magazine or something? She's like, there's loop right there. So they don't give them magazines. Really? Even in movies. <laughs> so it's like, where's your non jerk off bathroom? How does he. He doesn't have a bladder, right? It goes to donor storage. And this is like a scene in Family Guy. He's like, this is where you'd store all the stuff. And the doctor's like, are you doing something? And he's like, nah, my friend's yanking out a sample. And then Ted thinks of Melton John. <laughs> it's like, oh, you that teddy bear who came alive? I was trying to figure out where I'd seen you before. It's like, is that how people react to Seth? <laughs> he likes to help people fulfill their people's dreams of having children. He's like, oh, you want to have a look at the donor storage? Here, just let this sentient teddy bear 
into a room full of sperm. Oh, and they eliminate diseases and stuff. It's like a cryogenic lab. And John's in there, and he has a... He says, ew! He says, excuse me, I'll be right back. And there's a fucking... Sh and he's like, hey, look, it's your kid! He says, he's like... He's getting so close to... Oh, he got... Jizz all over him. <laughs> and then he's trying to scoop up the jizz into another cup. And then the whole shelf of jizz falls on him. And this was a scene in Family Guy that was behind a closed door where he's like, oh, it's in my raccoon wounds. Except he really, really wanted to do it to Mark Wahlberg. Probably since Boogie Nights. Just cover him in jizz. I relate. But here comes the hot nurse. And she's like, oh, those are the rejected sickle cell samplers. <laughs> He's like, you're covered in rejected black guy sperm. <laughs> this guy's got some sick fetishes. I love it. And then they go to Hasbro. And there's a, you know, in charge looking guy in a suit giving orders to people with clipboards who look like they're less in charge. Oh, and the guy who was the stalker from the last movie, played by Giovanni Ribisi, now has a mop and he's the janitor with a wig and a mustache on. He says he put fresh urinal cakes in there. He replaces the cakes. That's the Donnie difference. Weird. And then they just keep walking. Because when you say weird things, people don't want to talk to you. I relate. Donnie goes down to the basement with his curly wig, and his fake mustache, and all of these dismembered Ted's all over the place. Ooh, this is creepy. And then there's another Ted and he's, it seems like he's trying to make one of them sentient. He says, hi Ted, I've missed you. Squeezes his belly and he says, I love you. And he says, I love you too. And he looks, very sad, but he's going to do something bad to this bear right now. Pretty soon you'll be saying that for real, he says. Uh, he attaches, like, car battery jumpers to Ted's paws, the, the fake Ted or, you know, non-sentient Ted, like he's going to Frankenstein him. And it heats up his chest and sets him on fire. His heart just bursts into flames and then the sprinklers come on. And he says, soon, my love, soon. Oh, creepy. There's a black doctor who says, I won't be able to perform the procedure. Tammy Lynn, you're no longer fertile. Ted says, are you sure? Check again. He says, quite sure. It's like, because of your drug use, your ovarian canal has been compromised. Yikes, and then they showed two. Like the x-rays, one healthy and one gross. <laughs> the doctor said, when I saw this, I almost threw up and quit medicine. And she's like, none of this makes any sense. Yeah, it's kind of a uneducated view of fertility. Pretty much anyone who gets a period can get pregnant. It's more difficult for some. 
but it's not impossible. And so they had di decided to go and uh, adopt a kid. They're like, Steve Jobs was adopted. My mom was adopted. And she says, it's great. You know, we have a common goal. And they haven't fought in like a week. If the baby works out, they should get a dog. Oh my God, a German Shepherd. And a gun to protect us all. Holy shit. <laughs> Could it should have drawn the line at German Shepherd. And the adoption lady is like, no. Tammy Lynn's drug conviction. That was five years ago. Ted, in the eyes of the state, you are not a person. Technically, you are classified as property. He says, I'm not a person? Tammy says, that is so fucked up. And he's like, I'm property? There's like a lot of civil rights issues involved in this, huh? And the adoption lady, lady says, be careful. Your adoption request may have raised some red flags. May leave you quite vulnerable. Ooh. And John comes into the store where Ted works, and he's like, what does that mean? Like, you're a thing? You're like garbage or a piece of shit? He's like, like a hammer or an orange, but yeah. And Tammy's like, what the hell do they know? You can't just change your whole life by calling your property. His black friend says, better ask my ancestors. Somewhere you're across the world, fucking Thomas Jefferson. <laughs> yeah, you're like history come alive. It's like I never voted. I don't have a driver's license. I don't pay taxes. It's the first job I ever had. And the manager says, Ted, can I see it for a moment? But I'm going to have to let you go. He got a call from the labor department. Technically not a person. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> Aw, she's holding a baby booty. Be sad. He has little glasses on his face. You would have made such good parents as he hits a joint. <laughs> Why not? Um, they got a letter that says their marriage isn't recognized by the state. Oh, that's like the uh the gays that got married and like the state switched their status and stuff, that really does suck. It's like the government can just take your rights away whenever. And they're drinking beers and paper bags on a park bench. John says you gotta fight it, you gotta get a lawyer. Can we do that? Yeah. Sue the fucking government for your civil rights. That's a great idea. Maybe we'll get one of those 
<laughs> Harrison Ford lawyers. <laughs> Take that shit all the way up to Judge Judy if we have to. All our friends make sandwiches. <laughs> Look at that black clock. <laughs> this movie is very uh, phallic obsessed, but so are a lot of movies made by men. It's funny though, I love this movie. And the lawyer says, this is complicated. John says, you're the best. He says, your case isn't going to be cheap. Oh, and they make some Monopoly jokes like they have some kind of money, but it's Monopoly thing. <laughs> the lawyer's like, are you just saying Monopoly stuff? <laughs> I'm gonna take a walk and go, come back with two hundred dollars. <laughs> and he hired he hired his niece. Get a hungry young attorney. I get a more experienced lawyer in return. Are those hard candies just to take. It's like oh, those aren't supposed to be out. That's another line from Family Guy. Peters is like, are those just to take? <laughs> I like it when the cartoons come become like real movies. And she says, oh, fuck, because she hits her head on something. I do that all the time. And I wear that outfit with like the gray vest and the white shirt all the time, too. But her hair is a lot more beautiful than mine. She's 26. That's when I wrote that first fan fiction about Seth MacFarlane. It was titled What I Would Do Sexually to Seth MacFarlane. When I was 26. She said her uncle gave her all the details. And he's like trying to explain how, how serious this is. And she takes out a bong and starts smoking. And then they sit down and like, yeah, we can talk. <laughs> She like, she's like, you don't mind pot. I don't get, I get migraines. I get migraines. It's not a fucking excuse. Her middle name is Leslie. My mom and I call each other Leslie all the time. But they're like, oh, you're like Samuel Jackson. You haven't seen any movie ever? He's in everything. <coughs> I don't have a bong. I should get one. <laughs> How long has that van been there was the bash of weed they had. It's like, are you supposed to be fighting the war on drugs? She's like, the war on drugs is a joke. That's like all stuff I say. Lock up minorities for legal reasons and shit. They deny you the same rights as everyone else, just because you're different. He says, can you get me my life back? And she nods. I'm going to try as she blows out pot smoke. <laughs> and John's like, I'm having some trouble. Can you help me get home? We can't get... He just got to hold on to the wall because he's too high. <laughs> And they're just, like, easing him home. <laughs> like good drug friends. Uh, <laughs> the car horn goes off and he breaks out. <coughs> <coughs> About a mile and a half. And she's in heels. She's a trooper. Oh, and they have a fun library research montage and, like, a really cool old library in Boston with, like, 80s music playing. And she slams down law books. And, like, she's like, okay, we're going to watch. We're going to look through all these. And he has DVDs. Ernest goes to camp. Ernest goes to jail. The importance of being Ernest, which he says is very disappointing. If this wallpaper could talk. 
and there's like, oh, cool, it's like sound waves. And then there's a Breakfast Club reference. They're dancing on a ledge. And it's the same 80s song as the Fixing Stuff Up montage from Family Guy. And then they freeze frame in the air. And then she's going to ask him some questions. The TA says, Ted, do you consider yourself to be human? And then they just say some law and order shit. <laughs> Stop Beaver the witness. <laughs> I love this montage. Oh, and they're like having a picnic and look, he's looking through a comic. She's looking through a law book. And Ted is feeding a duck or a goose. And the goose is going to attack him. <laughs> he's trying to take a sandwich. And he's now in a fight with a goose. And the goose is carrying Ted away because he won't let go of the sandwich. <laughs> and John spits a spitball at Sam and it goes right in her mouth and she starts choking. And then she does a wet willy in his ear. <laughs> and then Ted just punches John in the face. <laughs> like this this pranks are going out of control. And then they misspelled the word penis on her forehead in Sharpie. <laughs> and they're smoking a bong in a corner of a library that's public. Let me tell you, suspend your disbelief about the teddy bear all you want. Ain't no library in America that's open to the public where you can smoke pot inside. Not yet. Oh, and he has to walk home holding the wall again. That's adorable. I, I love it when people freak out on pot because I'm like, it's okay. We got you. Oh, and they're watching Roots. Kunta. Kunta Kinte. And he's like, that's just like me. That's exactly what I'm going through as he's eating Doritos on a couch. And Sam says, you're going to need a last name. Last name of a movie character. He just names a really long string of movie names really fast this is impressive it's like in one breath club a lang mr t's character in rocky three i saw the first one why do I need to watch all four Rockies? There are so many references to all the Rockies in all the Family Guys, so I basically know all the references. Thanks, Seth. She's like, my college degree says I know Hamlet, Achilles, and Dorian Gray. Have you heard of them? Can either of you tell me who wrote The Great Gatsby? F. Scott Fitzgerald. Who's that? Why is he fuck him? He said F. Scott Fitzgerald. <laughs> That's his first name. His name's fuck Scott Fitzgerald. <laughs> What's the F's for? Francis. No, it's gotta be fuck. It has to be fuck. Why the hell would it be fuck? He's hiding something. It's fuck. <laughs> you guys are idiots. Yeah. Clever Lang. Okay. <laughs> then Hasbro executive and secretary says one of the janitors would like to see you. And he says, fresh cakes? It's Donnie. Donnie, I'm extremely busy with a Comic Con presentation. He says, you asked for new toy ideas from any and all employees? He's like, yes, I guess I did. So he's coming in. He's like, I love your dress, as she closes the door. And he loves that pony. He's like a little kid. Oh. 
Don't touch my pony. <laughs> this is Mr. Jessup. I can make this company a billion dollars. A little boy made a wish that his teddy bear would come to life. One of our Hasbro bears came to life. He says, have you seen this? Talking teddy bear sues for personhood. So what? Ted is suing for civil rights. The state will declare him property. Why would we kidnap the teddy bear? If we could cut him open to see what naked tits. If we could manufacture millions of Teds for every child in the world. We just have to make sure Ted loses the case. <clears throat> you get the best lawyer in the world. Ted's rights are officially known. We grab them. Nobody's going to kick up a fuss of property. It's like you're a lot more than your little kids. What do you want? I'm not interested in money. I want a Ted for my very own. Mm -hmm. Creepy. It's like we never had this conversation. We cannot know about this until we have him. Do you understand? Ooh, it's corporate espionage. <clears throat> I've never had Pringles on my steak before. Oh, nobody's hiring Ted. He said, ah, he's dressed up like a hooker. Three dollar BJs. Oh, wow, that's sad. Oh, that would probably work, though. Good for you, Ted. And Sam says we should focus our attention on the case. How is it a guy like you is unattached, she says to John. He's like, I was married. Just didn't work out. Oh, I'm sorry, that sucks. She was trying to change him into something he wasn't. He tried everything. And he wasn't himself anymore. They were just completely wrong for each other. She says, some people go through their whole lives trying to make it work with the wrong person. Get fucked up and throw apples at joggers. Wow, that's weird. Yeah, and they're just throwing apples at people who are jogging. Oh, and he ran into a guy on a bicycle, and they're laughing. That's what you get for fucking exercising. Jesus. Throw apples at him. That's actually from Kafka's Metamorphosis. Bet y'all didn't know that, did you? Now they're walking into the courthouse. Ted's in a little suit. 
very prestigious looking courthouse. And Sam looks nervous. They all look nervous. Tammy says, I'm scared. He says, I don't care what any piece of paper says, you're my wife. If we lose, I'm gonna cut that judge. You brought your switchblade? Oh, how'd you get a switchblade in? <clears throat> Is that over there? Chef Wild. Never lost a case in his wife. Case in his life. <laughs> and this guy's very lawyerly, white hair, white guy. And he's like, this is a simple case. Is Ted a human being or a piece of property? is a very special, unique thing to be human. A gift from God bestowed on only one species, us. But if we decide to share that gift, where does that leave us? Does your dog deserve human rights? Your cat? Your toaster? Ugh. Suddenly being human doesn't seem so special. It's not. I'm confident you'll make the right decision. Ooh, and Donnie is in the background with a fisherman's hat and sunglasses. Sam comes up and says, I'm Samantha Jackson. I'm a little nervous. Not because I'm a junior attorney arguing her first case. That I'm representing a teddy bear. I'm more nervous because of one simple word. Justice. I'm nervous that you're going to be swayed by smooth talk and a haircut. And forget about the most important aspect of this case. Justice. 150 years ago, a slave by the name of Trent Scott sued to prove that he was a person and not a piece of property, and he lost. And as history has shown us, that was injustice. In every civil rights conflict, we are only able to recognize the just point of view years after the fact. And when the next conflict comes along, we're once again blind to it as it's happening. Well, this is different, we say, but it isn't. It is the same beast, just wearing a different face, and it's happening again today. So I urge you, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, not to be a footnote on the wrong side of history. Don't wait too long to be right. Thank you. That was a lovely speech. He says, erection. <laughs> You're welcome. He said, you recently considered adopting a child, said Tammy, haircut lawyer. Why don't you just have a child of your own? And he says, because Teddy ain't got no dick. <laughs> you know that. Why does male... Is it a freak of genetics? He's like, he ain't got a dick because he's a fucking toy. What's your excuse? And they're like, yeah, like it's a Jerry Springer or something, but it's not. And then Sam asks John, how would you categorize your relationship with Ted? And he says, he's my best friend. So you don't see his, him as your property. He's like, no, he's a person. He's a <laughs> what is Steven Tyler? Some kind of soccer mom goody monster? <laughs> That's a weird phrase, but I love it. 
Where did you first encounter Ted? My parents got him for me when I was a kid. Oh, they got him. Where did they get him? A toy store. There's no need for high still. Nobody likes you. I saw you eating lunch alone, you'll lose it. I hope your kids get bird flu. What? <laughs> said your parents purchased Ted like you might purchase a baseball glove. And Ted's like, this is bullshit. This is a fact. Exactly what you do know. It's a fact. To the homos. And he says it's wrong. <clears throat> he says, piss off. I'm standing up for me and I'm standing up for the homos. We deserve respect. He's like, Ted, shut up. Takes out his phone and starts playing a game. I have composed myself a lot better in court. And Ted's going on the stand. Oh, what's he going to say? <laughs> it's my turn, asshole. She says, Ted, do you love your wife? And then the lawyer says, hey, do you love Tammy? He says, I love my, my wife more than anything in the world. I don't care what anyone says. He says, you are capable of love. He's like, Makes a joke about a doll. He says, do you believe you have a soul? He starts singing. I guess, like a soul song, I guess. Does that answer your question? <laughs> And uh, the judge says, oh, very rude, because he does have soul. <laughs> he says, I'm not a scientist. I don't know what makes a person a person. All I know is I feel stuff, just like all you guys. And I don't think I ought to be treated any different. Yeah. Capable of love. Aware of his own consciousness. Seems pretty human to me. And the guy is on the stand who is stuffing teddy bears. It's like, is there anything besides cotton in it? He has an electronic device in the chest, which can be programmed to be say, said phrases, like he's a robot. Very simple robot. Would you please press your chest? What? And the judge says, Call, follow the instructions, Mr. Global Lang. And it says, I love you, when he presses on his chest. Hmm. Oh, my heart. Poor Ted. I love you. In the news, civil rights ramifications. Ted the bear came to life right here in Boston. Is suing to that he's a person. No, there's like four people yelling at each other, talking over each other. We call the Statue of Liberty of she, but it's an object made of copper and steel. But she isn't conscious or sentient, but except in Ghostbusters, too. And Fox News is like, no, nope, no, nope, we, we don't agree, it's not. And, uh, What's his name? Jimmy Fallon's like. If Ted wins, Donald Trump's hair will file a similar lawsuit. Jimmy Kimmel says no. 
<clears throat> well, he was born the same time, Jimmy, so it's like they're the same age. And Bill Maher says, somebody named Ted Kennedy drove a, kid, a chicken to a lake. Oh, and Saturday Night Live has a, a guy in a bear suit saying, I'm not an animal like the elephant man. And then, like, a very fake version of uh, Sam. And then the bear attacks her. And they make a period joke. Ugh. Okay, there's a bunch of reporters there. Any reporters want to show up to when I'm going to court? That'd be nice. I wish somebody cared. Okay, they're saying, what are them? It's taken so long. They're having a debate. Maybe time to play the Beetlejuice call. <laughs> They won't see Beetlejuice three times. He'll be on our side. He'll help us. <laughs> Cut the shit. <laughs> and he takes it very seriously. He will not say Beetlejuice three times. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. I'm 33. Okay, the judge is here. Has the jury reached a verdict? Ted is not a person. Oh, he lost like that slave. That's so sad. So now this guy is trying to steal him so that he can cut him open. Make millions of them. Such a metaphor for the art that Seth MacFarlane has had to sell, isn't it? Little teddy bear says he's property. Aw, you're a person to me. And then he tells Donnie, we have no connection to this. The Hasbro CEO guy is like, He really wants him to say the password. Fresh cakes. Fresh cakes. So they're just sitting around all depressed because they lost the case. Tammy's really upset, crying. Make it a watch, Tyler Perry. It's wrong. Sam said, says she's sorry and she blames herself. She says, you just have a really shitty lawyer. John says, hey, you, could, you did everything you could. So what are we going to do now? We're going to call Patrick Megan, top civil rights attorney in America. <laughs> Somebody handed her a bunch of balloons that she flew away. He has become a high profile case, so the top lawyer might take him. He's a sucker for media. Interesting. Ah, time to grab the last beer. Where does it go? <laughs> oh, and she's on the phone with a, a lawyer while they're fighting over the last beer in the background. <laughs> he just punches him and then he starts beating him up, takes the beer. I'm sorry, nobody's paying attention to the serious conversation that she's having because he's shaking up the beer. He's like, ah. And he hands it to him. And he opens it and it's going to squirt everywhere. Ah, ha, ha.
Yay, they're going to take the case. <laughs> Go down to the improv and yell sad suggestions. He yells out 9-11. Robin Williams, who killed himself. Robin Williams on 9-11. Seth has never gotten over 9-11. And it's just so much in his work. I don't think anybody has, but missing that flight fucked him up. And Bill Cosby, you people are monsters. Make some fucking comedy. <laughs> so I don't do improv. That's it. giving to the audience a little too much control. <laughs> Tammy says, you kick some ass because I'm not taking off this wedding ring. Aw, she loves him so much. That's so cute. <clears throat> then they go drive to New York to go meet with the big civil rights lawyer. It's like a four hour drive from New York to Boston and they make it seem like it's, I mean, Boston to New York, they make it seem like it's taking forever. You can definitely make that in a day. <laughs> and Ted singing along badly to a song, like he doesn't know the words to it. <laughs> She went to school at Arizona State, which has a, a reputation for being a bad school. I relate, because I went to the Evergreen State College. Our, how many times were you fucked on a houseboat? How many credits did I get for underwater basket weaving? Our mascot is a gooey duck. It's a clam with a phallic extension. So they were making fun of Sam for the school she went to. I relate. <laughs> and Sam's eating a salad while Ted eats chocolate ice cream. Have some pussy crisp. You need something nutritionist. Nutritional. <laughs> Are you guys ever going to make out or what? It's Sam's like shy. Some guy with his butt crack hanging out is uh, getting mad at a waitress. And he's being mean to her. Betsy can to toss a cookie crisp into his ass crack. So your mask got a broken condom? Mine was close. Oh, and she got. Oh, and he's blind. <laughs> he was pretending that uh, Mark Wahlberg is five. And the blind, angry guy, like, calms down. And Sam's like, now we're even bigger assholes. Oh, he's not my boyfriend. And the hot waitress is like, oh, good. Just get the check. She was giving you the fuck me eyes. She was giving you the fuck me eyes. Some women have fuck me eyes. You have give us the ring, my precious eyes. It's like Amanda Seyfried is one of the most gorgeous women on the face of the planet, and they make fun of the one thing that makes her unique is that her, she's got like very big, wide set eyes. But it makes her gorgeous, and they make fun of her for it. Ted's like, I want to feel useful. Oh, so he's driving. Ooh, they're letting the teddy bear drive. But, you know, 
they're high, so they make weird decisions. How can he reach the pedals? There's always some way that he reaches the pedals, right? And it's a song from the Blues Brothers. And it's sort of a parody of the Blues Brothers. While John is asleep in the front seat. And Ted's driving. Why is it taking them so long to get from Boston to New York? It does not take this long. I've never made that drive, but it's not that far. And Ted is very distracted as he's driving. There's even a GPS, and he thinks that that makes it uh, okay to just be distracted while he's driving. See, I'm making a YouTube video while smoking pot. You know, that's kind of the same thing. Except who am I hurting? Besides my own reputation, but <laughs> what am I going to do about that now? <laughs> oh, and they kind of crashed into somebody. And Ted was not paying attention because he was, oh, until he dropped a cigarette or something. He starts swerving. And he drives into some woods. Really, really far. Is he even trying to break? Or is he just driving madly through the woods until the car gets stuck in a barn? Like, stuck in a barn. He says, Sam, it's been 20 minutes. You want to take over? How's she going to get the car out of the fucking barn? <laughs> I love that. After, like, something really intense, they make a joke. It's like, I'm real sorry that that bond just came out of nowhere. And she's like, I, I should have never let... <laughs> never let you drive and he was like yeah you shouldn't have done that <laughs> <clears throat> says what are we going to spend the night here yeah we got to find some firewood you can't you, you didn't drive that far like you can find some lights or a highway or something you, you don't need you just really want to build a campfire and hang out with this chick Oh, and you found some pot growing there. But it's just a leaf. Where's the bud? Oh, nobody knows that by smell in the dark. He's trying to say that. And he's like, hey, there's, turn your head. It's like a vast field of marijuana. Ah. That shit would be guarded. I mean, at least from deer. Deer eat weed like crazy, but there's this beautiful orchestral music as these gorgeous shots of weed in the moonlight. And yeah, yeah, I agree. It is goddamn beautiful. There's no words. They should have said a poet, which is a line from Contact, when Jodie Foster's going through the wormhole. There's no words. They're moving in herds. I don't know what that's a reference to. <laughs> oh, it's a dick-shaped bong. like I got it at a bachelorette party they're like no I don't want to take a bong hit out of a dick he doesn't want to big, put a big glass cock in his mouth this is all I brought <laughs> non dick bong that's the South Korean president hmm. <laughs> Your ex-wife did not 
get stoned with you. That's ridiculous. Pot is the best. Think this guy's gonna help us? Shoot us, I don't know. We're going to the right place. He says, I wanna thank you. I know we're not making much. He's like, there's more important things in life than money. This bear is alive. When the law devalues one kind of life, how long before it devalues another? Who gets subjugated next? Have you seen the guys in Boston? <laughs> Ooh. He's covering up a shamrock tech, too, on his cap. He's got a little cowboy hat on, and he's got a rifle and a guitar. And it's not loaded, uh, except he fires it. In. His fucking nose came off. <laughs> it's amazing that that guitar is perfectly in tune after being in an abandoned barn. And the way her voice sounds is like in a recording booth, like everything's just a little too perfect for being around a campfire. But it's a movie. And it's beautiful. There's moonlight, a campfire. She's playing a guitar. And uh, there's a deer that's coming up in a raccoon. Like all the animals are coming up, like her singing is magic. This little bunny rabbit. And there's like strings and stuff in the background. Like there's like this orchestral score and like a piano in the background as she's playing. <laughs> Where's that coming from? She is magic. She could make all that come out of a guitar. And Ted's just eating the pot. You know, you can't get high that way. You have to heat up THC to get high on weed. This is advice for, like, the one Bulgarian 12-year-old who will actually watch this entire video. So there's, oh, a fish is jumping out of the water because he wants to be closer to her singing. I don't think I would want this power. Why are all the animals coming near me? Oh, and a lobster, too. <laughs> it's like funny shit's got to go on while anything serious is happening in this. Because people expect it. When you start out in comedy, if anything else is completely serious, then people lose their shit. And he's like totally into it when she finishes the song and uh, John kisses Sam and Ted's like yes <laughs> and then it's morning again and they're trying to pull the car out of the barn. Oh, and it just falls down and it's on some hay bales. But it was just kissing, it was just finger stuff, and he, then she throws a guitar at him. Still somehow perfectly in tune. Why are they driving away from all that weight? Are they gonna take some with them? They're gonna get shot. About an hour outside of the city. There's the people who own the pot. Yeah, and they've got guns and a jeep, and now they're shooting at them. Shot through the back. 
I just said they were going to get shot, didn't I? I did. They're driving through the field of pot, and they're apologizing to the pot. Yeah, I would be doing <laughs> dropping as much of it as possible, too. Uh, seizing the day. <laughs> and she's... <laughs> I, uh, I could be on this road trip, <laughs> except for the getting shot part. That's not fun. <laughs> but it, there's got to be a chase. This is like every movie follows the same plot structure. This is literally like when people say cut to the chase, they mean this scene. There's a chase scene. Oh, and the Jeep gets hit by a truck. Shit. And then the Jeep explodes. Holy fuck, they're dead. They're waving at us, they're giving us a thumbs up. Ooh. That's messed up. Stuff it under the seat, we don't want to go to jail. But then there's that dick bomb, and he's like looking at the dick bomb. And he takes a bong hit from the dick. Because he wants to put a dick in his mouth. And John takes a picture of him. To put for payback. <laughs> My amazing summer. For when he was covered in the jizz. Shut up and suck that dick. Fuck you, dudes. And there's some, like, 1930s New York, New York theme playing from a musical, New York, New York. All these shots of famous New York places. Just Seth is, cinematic taste is like, you know, so golden age of cinema. Ugh. Hello, Jews! And they all wave. <laughs> yeah. Gotta love my Jews in New York. Oh, and there's a bunch of Star Wars guys that they almost run over. It's Comic-Con, you idiot. Yeah, there's a Jedi, a Stormtrooper. Bite me, Captain Kirk. That's Star Trek. It's two different franchises. I would say that sarcastically. Stop, Darth Vader. Don't use the force on them. He blew up my planet. Then Ted's wearing a little tie, and they're sitting in the office. After spending all night outside, the car in the barn and getting shot at, and they're just, like, totally clean and... Did they stop at a hotel first? Oh, and he breaks the glass table just by putting his foot on it. There goes our first impression. <clears throat> and it's Morgan Freeman. Very recognizable voice. And he's like, this office is awesome. You ever drink, bring chicks up here? I want to sleep on a bed made of your voice. Ooh, I love that line. It applies to Seth for me. And Morgan Friedman says he won't be taking your case. Comes down to this. You want to be human in the eyes of the law. It's a hard sell, even for me. See, the important thing about being human is making a contribution to society, assisting in the betterment of your race. You've done none of that. I've read about your life. The drugs, the parties, the prostitutes, the arrests. Sam says, we came a long way to meet you because you could help us. And he said, I could consider it, and I have. Ted, you're special. 
you could have been an inspiration to the world, could have been a leader, a role model. Instead, you're Justin Bieber. <laughs> and he says, fuck you. That, he's had a positive effect on me too, John. Arrest. How do you prepare for a Foo Fighters concert? <laughs> know why I lost, you lost this case? It can't be argued by reason. The public doesn't judge by reason, it judges by emotion. And you can't appeal an emotional conviction. Nonetheless, we, I wish you all the best in your efforts. She's like, he needs help. And from what I know about you, that would have been enough. I'm sorry you're not who I, I'd hoped you'd be. And he says, are, are those two chills to take? Those aren't supposed to be out. Poor, somebody give John some candy. I want to send him a whole bag of Tootsie Rolls. <laughs> Poor guy. Oh, I kicked the table. Sorry. That's it. Some property. No rights, no nothing. Sam feels terrible. Let you guys down all over again. She said, he says, hey, you did your best. He's like, you're still the best thing that's happened to me in a long time. <laughs> then they kiss. Glad you guys are so happy. Oh, this is Dark Night of the Soul. Ted's really pissed up off that. Oh, I wouldn't be a fucking thing. Like a garbage or a piece of shit. He's like, we've been fighting alongside you the whole way. You have fun pork and Gollum. <laughs> Who's Gollum? She's a model. <laughs> Gollum. Oh, and this oboe music in the background is so perfect for Dark Knight of the Soul when he runs into a Hellboy. Comic Con is really like this. It is just like sensory overload, like a carousel, a runaway carousel all day long, just like different characters. And uh, yeah, if you wanted to kidnap a teddy bear, that'd be the place to do it. I got a great response for my petitions at uh, LA Comic Con recently, thanks to everyone who signed. May the force be with you. It's a big crowd scene in Comic Con, a bunch of people in costumes wandering around, and Ted's just wandering around. And ah, it's Patrick Warburton dressed up as the tick, who is his character. And there, a Klingon. Klingon, that's what he is. Fuck. <laughs> he was a Klingon on uh, Star Trek. And they go there as a gig. They fuck with the nerds. They're like really aggressive gay dudes. And then they uh, he said something about Big Lee Chew and gave a nerd a wedgie. Hmm. Good luck with your dick there. Meaning is, God damn it, that underwear had shit on it. That's why you bring hand sanitizer to Comic Con. And they have the car and David Hasselhoff for their Knight Rider panel. David Hasselhoff is really trying to give a good answer to a really dumb question.
He said, how many beers did you have before you got naked with that hamburger? <laughs> And uh, that's Seth doing the voice of Knight Rider uh, defending David Hasselhoff. <laughs> he was cast as a lawnmower. And the car is passionately defending David Hasselhoff for giving her, giving the car money. And the car is uh, crying through the windshield wiper fluid. And I'm sure it's, it was the voice of Mr. Feeney, who was also the dad in The Graduate. It was the voice of the car, but that was Seth. And now the car is attacking Ted. <laughs> Kit, he's not worth it. His personal life is our business. So this is Seth as a car and Seth as a teddy bear arguing with each other, saying, get some therapy. Oh, it's a Ninja Turtle. And the Ninja Turtles like I'm such a big fan of yours in the early 90s. He's Raphael. Except I can tell from the voice that it's Donnie. It's like, yeah, follow me to this back room. I've been mistaken for an Ewok three times today. And he takes his head off and it's Donnie. Says it's so good to see you, Ted. It's been some time, hasn't it? Since you ripped me in half. Says that wasn't supposed to happen. That was an accident. I have some big plans for you, Ted. Very big plans. I need you to come with me now. He says, go to hell, and he runs through Comic Con. Donnie's a Ninja Turtle. But there's like probably a million Ninja Turtles at Comic-Con. That's why it would be like, you could totally murder or kidnap someone at Comic-Con because everybody's in costumes and there's a lot of different costumes that are the same. And then uh, Ted steals somebody's phone and hides underneath a transformer to try to call John. He's a teddy bear on his own in New York, for God's sakes. He's like, hey, you got to help me. He's at Comic-Con. Donnie, he's here. He's after me. Jesus Christ. Run, Ted. She says, what's the matter? Gotta get to Comic Con, let's go. Now there's another chase scene. And uh, Donnie is chasing after Ted. And it says classic talking teddy bears, and they all look like Ted, and he might be hiding in one of them. It's like, I love that song they sing at Red Sox games, Neil Diamond. So infectious, you can't help but sing along. He knows how to trigger him. Start singing Sweet Caroline. You might be able to get me to doing this. <laughs> yep. Yep. And he had to do the ba ba ba, and then he starts just beating the shit out of him. That is not what I would do. And then the guy who was selling the bear said, Hey, you gotta pay $40 for that bear that you were just beating the shit out of. 
And I'm pretty sure Ted is unconscious now. And uh, John and Sam are looking for Ted. Any of you guys see the talking teddy bear? The new Superman is Jonah Hill. And John yells, fuck! <laughs> Who's Superman? And she's like, no, I'm just kidding. I'm fucking with you. And in the Hasbro room, people are cheering as the, uh, he says, fresh cakes to the CEO of Hasbro, who's giving a speech, and he's like, look at this sizzle reel with the new toys, take a look. And he uh, goes back to where Donnie has unconscious Ted. It's like there's an empty supply room downstairs. There was an issue, so he's unconscious now. And then the tick shows up, and he's like, like, oh, we're going to take him and sober him up. Yeah, the Tick and the Klingon are just uh, bullying people. It's the voice of Joe. It's like, did you get a nose job? He's like, no. <laughs> just ran into his head. Oh, and they got to go find him. Oh my god. That's assault. Okay, now they got Ted strapped down with the duct tape. He says he really is extraordinary, isn't he? He says kidnapping only applies to people and your property. He's like, yeah, and so is that fucking hairpiece. And uh, Flash Gordon is taking pictures with people in Comic-Con. Oh, he messed up the car. <laughs> Uh, and Flash Gordon starts a fight with him at Comic Con. Oh, and three chick, three tits chick from Total Recall gets her shirt torn off and is very offended. But you had to make that happen, huh? He's like, I'm a regular old teddy bear. I won't be any fun dead, will I? It's like you're only one bear. We're going to figure out what makes you real, make millions of Teds, one for every child in the world. One that loves me just as much as you love John. He says, Tani, I can never love you. I don't want to die. <laughs> what if I gave you a hand job outside your pants while you had an ice cream? And he, like, thinks about it. And the CEO says, we'll give you a minute. Like, that's going to fix it. Hmm. And there's a bunch of different uh, characters from movies fighting at Comic-Con. It's just a giant, uh, massive fight. And then Sam sees the actual Gollum and gasps. And, whoa. Somebody gets hit with a cannon, and Marty McFly is in a fight with a Doc Brown, and Picard is, yeah, just a bunch of nerds. Ah! And the nerds rebelled against the Tick and the Klingon. Good for you, nerds. Godzilla takes out some Play-Doh and some, uh, oh, looks like Mila Jovovich, like the fifth element, 
was doing some uh, gymnastics and ran into somebody. And they're running out to, like, away from the... Oh, and Ted's about to die. He's cutting into him. But does he have a central nervous system? How does this really work? He says, I work for Mattel. <laughs> Competitor, yeah. And John yells at him. It's like he's going to beat the shit out of him. And it punches him, and his hair flies off. Ted's like, I fucking knew it. He thinks the lady doth protest too much. And uh, now they're at a Fox booth at Comic-Con. They're walking through, and nobody's fighting anymore, thank goodness. There's a lot of security guards at Comic-Con, too. Like, uh, Okay, talking teddy bear movie, suspending disbelief. And they're having a we're making up talk. It doesn't matter what the world calls me. I know who I am, and that's what's important. And I know who my friends are. Honest to God, you two wanted to be together, nothing would make me happier. And she says, as far as I'm concerned, you're such a person. That means the world coming from someone who went to Arizona State. That's what he says to her. And Donnie's cutting something so that it falls on Ted. Oh, it's the Star Trek chip. Ah! And it hits John, and he, like, flies through the air, and then some TV screens fall on him. And it looks like he's dying. Oh my goodness. I knew that it was from Star Trek. How the hell did it fall? This guy is still after you. The guy just like the Ninja Turtle. But there's lots of Ninja Turtles. Which one? Who can play this Wal Where's Waldo shit, you son of a bitch? And then he plays the song that uh, triggers Donnie. Makes him want to dance. 80 song. Then he starts dancing. <laughs> I like that song. And he's starting to go to jail again. He probably wouldn't go to jail. Well, maybe attempted murder, but he was trying to kill the bear, which is technically property, so. He says, Johnny, wake up. Oh. So sad. He thinks he's dead. He's not dead. We all know he's not dead. And he's in a hospital. Oh, and the news shows Ted being really sad because uh, John's trapped under the thing. Screens or whatever that fell on him. And they're sitting by his bed as he's unconscious. And a doctor comes in. Doctor's like, we don't know. Uh oh. This is such like a 
tugs at your heartstrings movie trope, like, you know, in the last, like, couple minutes of a movie makes you, you know, life or death care about the characters. Oh, and then he starts flatlining. <gasps> Got to raise that heart rate again. Code blue. That means, yeah, get the fuck out. Got to get the crash cart. Yeah. yeah, it's scary when somebody's about to die in the hospital. And they're all in the waiting room. doctor comes back in. It's Ted, Tammy, and Sam waiting. And he says he's sorry he didn't make it. Hmm. Did they let people who are not immediate family see a dead body? I don't know. Some very sad music. This is taking She kisses him on the head. And Ted says, Johnny, you are my thunder buddy. You are my thunder buddy for life. You gave up your own life to save mine. The only problem is... I don't know how my life works without you. Hi, John. How does he make tears? Does he have tear ducts? Ah, and then he wakes up! <laughs> and then he just, he's just happy, and then he, like, starts punching him. <laughs> and Sam's like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, they... he made him think he is retarded in the last movie. And Sam is not happy. No. That is... Holy fuck, they could get sued. Yeah, Facebook doesn't matter anymore. Oh. Yeah, you have to talk about it. Oh, and then he kisses her. Yeah, well, good talk. I... <laughs> and uh, Morgan Freeman's back. He says, is it all right if I come in? He's like, how you feeling? Very lucky. I saw what you did on TV. You know why? Because he's a person. I'm not going to change that. Not in our eyes. Ted is real, so you can go fuck yourself. He says, I will. <laughs> as soon as I'm done fucking myself, I'd like to take your case. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, they, yeah, you want him.
and he saw what John did for him. He was willing to give his life for yours. Reminded him of why he chose to do the kind of work he does. He was wrong. Anyone who can inspire that kind of love in another person deserves to be called human. Shall we get started? Then they go to the Supreme Court. What defines a person, says Margaret Freeman? What defines property? What's the difference? Blah, 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 Morgan Friedman speech. Self-awareness. Ability to understand complex emotions. And a capacity for empathy. Ted is self-aware. <laughs> What's your name? Ted Clubbelang. saw the images of him agonizing over his fallen friend. All the qualities of personhood. Right there for anyone to see. A just court by definition must grant basic human rights to all those who de deserve them. just like the Emancipation Proclamation and the 13th Amendment did so many years ago. I invite you to change the world. Aww. And there's a whole crowd out there and they're all cheering and waving for them. Aww. He says, this is the second time you've made me real. Oh. Oh. He proposes. That's the first statement he makes as a person. Aww. That's so cute. And Patrick Stewart starts talking again. They're married again. And adopted a little baby boy. Apollo Creed Club of Lang. They got something for him. It's a little teddy bear! Aww. Aww. <laughs> you could do all kinds of drugs together. That's all I want for him. It's your turn to change him. Ah, oh, fuck me! <laughs> <laughs> then there's a bunch of dialogue about throwing a shit-filled diaper and yelling and <laughs> hashtag shit happens. I don't know which one I like better, Ted or Ted 2, but uh, that's one of my goddamn favorite movies. And if you don't agree, uh, fuck you, just like Thunder. Thunder Buddies for life. <laughs>